The Last of Us was created by male feminist Neil Cuchman. He respects women so much that he decided to attack iconic female characters in video games. And yet we sexualize, we objectify, we marginalize, and we reduce these female characters a lot less than they can be. What are you, gay? Before presenting everyone his idea of what a woman should be with The Last of Us Part 2. People, of course, rejected this piece of shit, which offended him so much, and to stroke his own ego, he decided to make The Last of Us as a TV show, but instead of just telling us the event of this game, he has repurposed it to include a lot of filler, not just to pad out the episodes by pandering to critics, but to include a lot more Oscar bait, so Neil can go home and sodomize himself with an award. He has also added a lot of unnecessary plot points to help justify some of the shit that is going to happen in the second season because his ego is so massive that he is willing to compromise the story that everyone likes and got him famous in the first place because he cannot take the fact that people don't like his shitty sequel pathetic the two biggest problems this series has is the amount of filler and the terrible pacing. It has so much filler that you can cut out two entire episodes and not miss anything. And because of the amount of time it wastes on the episodes that do matter, it affects the pacing poorly as well. Every episode has about 10 to 20 minutes of pointless scenes setting up characters that nobody gives a shit about and will never see again, which takes away attention from Joel and Ellie, who have nowhere near the amount of chemistry they do in the game. The casting of Joel and Ellie is bad, with Ellie being the worst. Pedro Pascal is nowhere near intimidating enough to be him, and worst of all, they decided to make him less violent and more emotional than from the game. He is prone to panic attacks, because they can't have him behave like a toxic male despite living in a hyper-violent world. Joel has gone from an emotionally distant man and the very definition of stoic to a hyper-emotional loser who loses control of himself despite being a seasoned survivor. Ellie, played by Bella Ramsey, who portrayed the most annoying character in the final season of Game of Thrones, now plays Ellie, who is also the most annoying character in this TV show, as she lacks any of the charm and vulnerability that the original did. In the game, her confidence came off as false bravado, as she was trying to convince herself as much as she was trying to convince Joel, because deep down she is a teenage girl with no idea how to survive in this world. Whereas in this show, she has dropped that uncertainty and is now so sure of everything she says and does, so much so that she now comes across as arrogant. Her only moment of genuine weakness is when she is attacked by David, which is pulled directly from the game. The dynamic between the two is worse as well, because because Joel was clearly in charge with Ellie learning from him, but in this show Ellie seems to dictate every conversation they have. We then have the world building which is shit, we have so much food, there is morbid obesity, there are power stations that work 20 years after an apocalypse, and people are wearing brand new clean clothes. Isn't the world supposed to be recovering from a zombie apocalypse? None of this is believable. Speaking of which, there are the zombies, or lack thereof. This is supposed to be a zombie apocalypse, and yet where the fuck are they all? The only real danger is retarded leaders controlling groups of people who realistically would never survive the apocalypse. They have also changed the zombies to be connected to an underground network of mushrooms that can contact one another, but this idea is dropped after episode 2 and never spoken of again. Now with all that covered, I'm going to break down the plot of the season. Episode 1 starts off in 1968, and we have a scientist explain the fungus virus to us. He says that global warming can cause a fungus outbreak. Well that's just silly. Silly, yes. Idiotic, yes. So why exactly is there no fungus outbreak in tropical countries where it's hot as fuck? It's usually best not to try to explain the virus because we run into these kinds of problems, and this feels like it's just environmentalism pushed into the story. It then cuts to 2003, and we see that Joel and Tommy don't look anything like the characters in the video game. I guess Neil has to get those checkboxes in somewhere if he wants that award. They are having breakfast and the radio comes on. Joel and Tommy don't know where Jakarta is because why the fuck would they? But luckily Sarah is there to lecture them. Jakarta isn't a country. In fact, it's the capital of Indonesia. You must be fucking unbearable to live with. <laughs> Mushroom-headed zombies are more believable than Sarah is. What state is Utah in? Michigan. The beginning of the episode is just her running around doing random shit like going to school, getting Joel's watch fixed, and volunteering to look after an old neighbor. 
Later that night, explosions go off and all shit is breaking loose. Sarah decides to leave her house even after hearing weird shit going on and visits the next door neighbor's home and sees a zombie. Run, bitch! Run! She is then saved by Joel and Tommy as they drive to town. It ends up being overrun and a crashed plane part flips the car. Now the speed of it would just smash right through the vehicle, killing everybody inside, but whatever. Joel carries an injured Sarah across the town until a soldier saves them from a zombie, but ends up shooting at them, killing Sarah. It cuts to 20 years in the future, and we see the city they live in is under martial law. Joel has become a smuggler and is now trying to contact his brother who has gone missing. We cut to Tess who is being held hostage by a man who seems to be more scared of her than she is of him, despite being a boss of a gang of violent men. You'll find that most of the men in this show are very weak. She gets freed by an explosion but is arrested by the army and freed the same day. Now for a fascist government, they seem to be pretty reasonable. She goes on to tell Joel that Robert has their shit and they have to get it back. Well, it turns out he's dead and was killed by the all-female Fireflies. This is where they meet Ellie and Marlene, the leader of the Fireflies. The Che Guevara of Boston? This show makes a few pro-commie comments. Literally, this is the commune. We're communists. Why the fuck do rich cunts like Neil love communism so much? It's like they believe they won't be against the wall when the revolution comes. Anyway, they make a deal to take Ellie and smuggle her out of the city. In the apartment, Ellie starts being annoying until they finally sneak out of the city. They do such a poor job they are caught immediately after leaving the walls, despite being experienced smugglers. Luckily, it's the guard that Joel bribed with drugs earlier on, otherwise they would all be dead. He scans them, but Ellie stabs the guard, and instead of gunning them all down, he just allows Joel to run up to him and kill him. We find out that Ellie is immune, they run out into the city, and that's the end of the episode. For a first episode, it was fine, setting up everything, but it's here that the show starts to go downhill until the last two episodes. Episode 2 starts with an Indonesian woman who is the head of virology in a massively Muslim country. I find it highly unlikely. And it's just 10 minutes of filler about early cases of infection. We cut to the actual story of the show and it's Joel, Tess and Ellie mostly just walking and talking through the city. Where'd you learn to do that? She's just flipping the knife, it's not a skill, why the fuck are you so impressed? They enter a building and are attacked by clickers. They make their way to the fireflies but it turns out they are all dead. Tess reveals that she has been bitten and Joel flinches from the news. Show me. Let me see. I didn't mean for this. Show it to me. This is the softer Joel they have been aiming for, who unsurprisingly is a bitch. They step on a spore that connects to all the infected outside and they attack the building. Tess just stands there letting herself be deep-throated by a zombie. Why? She has a box of grenades there, and instead of using them, she decides to set herself on fire. It would have been quicker and less painful to do that, but she isn't a smart character. The building explodes, and that's the end of episode 2. Episode 3, or better known as the Oscar bait episode, is just two gay dudes getting it on for almost an hour. The episode starts with Ellie lecturing Joel about Tessa's death. Nobody made you or Tess take me. Nobody made you go along with this plan. So don't blame me for something that isn't my fault. What a cunt. Another case of Joel being a passive bitch and Ellie not acting like a teenage girl. She is talking down to him despite him being the one in charge. They head to an abandoned station and Ellie finds a zombie before sadistically killing it. She also finds a box of tampons because the show thought we needed to know that. That's disgusting. They walk and before long they come across a mass grave. It's here where we get yet another flashback, as this show is obsessed with everyone else other than our main characters. We see Bill, a doomsday prepper that is the only man left in his town as the others were taken away by the military. He fortifies the town from attack and catches a man in one of his traps, who is called Frank. Bill and Frank have dinner together, and after only knowing each other for a few hours, and in stereotypical fashion, they have unprotected gay sex. Everyone has AIDS! Now, at this point, I thought I had accidentally put on a gay porn parody, because the plot of this show is supposed to be about Joel and Ellie in a zombie apocalypse. And yet, here we are, subjected to a gay sex scene for no reason. It goes on way too long, and Bill acts like a frightened teenage girl. I want you to know that I'm not a whore. 
Yes, you are. You're having unprotected sex with a man you just met. You're a fucking stereotype. Thankfully, it cuts away to three years later and they are arguing about gardening. I'm so bored. We're gonna make friends and we will invite them to visit. It's the fucking apocalypse. Why the fuck are they talking like they're making plans for the weekend? The friends Frank is talking about is Tess and Joel, as they just left the city to have dinner with some guy that Tess has been speaking to on the radio, and luckily for them though, it didn't turn out to be a trap. Joel blindingly trusting people he's never met is definitely set up for what happens in season 2, it's why they wrote him to be this stupid. Three more years go by as six years after the end of the world has happened, and somehow they haven't been attacked and are even gardening together. Who gives a shit? Later on, they are finally attacked for the first time, but it happens to be by a gang of incompetent bandits, as they just walk into the fire traps Bill has set up. It cuts to the modern day and Frank has MS. Luckily, Bill has a fully functional wheelchair and roads for him to use 20 years after the apocalypse. They spend their last day together before killing themselves. Oh yeah, Joel and Ellie show up. Remember them, the supposed main characters of the show? Well, they show up to the compound and Ellie finds Bill's gun and keeps it. You see, Joel can't give Ellie the gun like he did in the game. No, it has to be Bill because Joel, as a straight man, can't give power to Ellie, a woman. Anyway, they take Bill's car, which looks brand new, 20 years into an apocalypse and drive off, and that's the end of the episode. This episode focused on two characters that meant nothing to the overall plot and was only placed here to pander to critics and to check off boxes. Episode 4 starts with them heading to Tommy's but they have to cut through a city where they end up getting ambushed. Joel actually behaves like the real Joel would, taking control of the situation and killing everyone. He then gets jumped from behind and Ellie shoots the man in the spine. After this, once again the show stops following the main characters and cuts to a group of survivors and they are led by, you guessed it, another woman. No way! No wonder the world is still fucked, even with almost no zombies you still have diversity quotas, which is probably the reason why every group we come across is fucked and Bill and Frank's place was the only one that was run properly. She threatens to kill their only doctor because he knows where the man who killed her brother is. She doesn't at first because that would be a stupid decision until the two people Joel killed are brought in. Now because these two people are dead, she decides to kill the doctor. Are you a complete retard? She is such a good leader that when they discover an underground infected hive beneath them, she just tells her right hand man to keep chasing the person who killed her brother. Now that is somehow more important than all of them being eaten alive. Normally, the second in command would have shot her in the head for being this reckless, but is unable to because this show needs representation. Joel and Ellie head up to the apartments to get a better view of the city. They end up going to sleep. They wake up to find Henry and Sam standing over them with a gun, and that's the end of episode 4. In the game, Joel overpowers Henry and almost kills him, but do you really think they're going to let Joel not only show some aggression, but also beat up a black man? I don't think so. There is no way Neil Cuchman would allow that, as he wants that award to shove up his own ass. Episode 5 begins with yet another flashback, and we can see that they have made Sam deaf in this, because Neil has to get in as many checkboxes as is humanly possible. We then see female leader failing to be intimidating to the informants that the local government used. I do not believe for one moment that she would be the leader of this group, as she lacks any charisma, competency, and is not remotely intimidating enough to be one. She even shows Admiral Holdo levels of leadership. When her right-hand man questions her, all she does is embarrass him in front of all his men. Oh, I'm sorry. How long do you think we should wait? Should we wait a day or two? Should we wait a week? What a bitch! We then have 10 minutes of Henry hiding in an attic with Sam before leaving and stumbling across Joel and Ellie. Ellie behaves like the adult in this situation trying to get Joel to stop acting like an idiot. So we're fucking tall, man. That's just the way he sounds. Joel, tell him he's okay. Everything is great. Dude. They end up eating together and decide to go through the maintenance tunnel to get around the survivors and leave town. We learn that Henry snitched on female leader's brother who was the actual leader at the time, but her second in command simps for her, saying that she was the real leader all along. Your brother was a great man. He didn't change anything. You did. 
Pull your tongue out of my arsehole, Gary. Now I can see why he is not willing to tell anybody about the giant hive beneath them. He is a groveling simp who is willing to let everyone around him die for his queen. So they get out of the city pretty easily and start loudly talking because why not? There's almost no zombies in this zombie apocalypse. What they attract instead is a sniper, which Joel sneaks around and begs him to surrender. Please don't do it. He kills him, but it turns out that the sniper was a part of the survivors looking for them. Which is dumb, because they put their oldest, weakest, sleepiest, most prone to die old man with failing eyesight on watch in this house alone. It's lucky for them though, he wasn't asleep. Backup arrives and Joel kills a man driving the truck. It causes an explosion and female leader gives a cartoonishly evil speech about wanting to kill children. He's just a fucking kid! Well, kids die, Henry. They die all the time. Luckily for them, though, she wasted so much time that they end up getting saved by the infected. The simp sacrifices himself for his queen, who does a shit jog instead of running full speed for her life. He gets decapitated and she doesn't give a fuck. This is why you do not simp and it keeps happening in every show we see. She catches up to the group but doesn't shoot them. She once again wastes enough time to get killed and they run away. Later on they find shelter and it's revealed that Sam was bitten. He attacks Ellie but is killed by Henry who then kills himself and that's the end of episode 5. Episode 6 starts off in a hut where we see two American Indians. This show has almost every checkbox ticked. We just need some Asian and transgender representation and we have bingo. Now, as we can clearly see, the woman is morbidly obese. Just how exactly is there so much food 20 years after the apocalypse? What did you eat? They don't take Joel and Ellie as serious threats, and I wouldn't either. They warn the pair of them not to cross the river as it's dangerous. You're not gonna scare us. Scared him? Is there nothing that doesn't scare him in the show, as he goes outside and has a panic attack? Ellie goes on to show how much she cares for Joel. He's just a reminder that you're dead, I'm fucked. Shut up, fine. Before they cross the river, they make camp and they begin to chit-chat. Ellie goes on to say who her favourite astronaut is. Sally fucking lied. And why is that? Because she is the first woman in space who only went up after a bunch of men did to check that it was safe. Are you with me, fellas? <laughs> Joel falls asleep and wakes up to find that Ellie didn't wake him. You can't do things like this. But I can, because I just did. If I was Joel, I would just fucking leave her in the wilderness where she belongs. She is that annoying. They go on to walk into an ambush, but instead of being killed, they end up being taken to a walled off city where Joel is reunited with Tommy. Ellie tries to act tough at breakfast. What? What's wrong with you? What about her manners? Have you ever tried sitting down with your children and hitting them? And we see Tommy's wife, who is not betrayed by a blonde woman, because this show seems to fucking hate them. They go on to say that they built this entire community in seven years. Tommy then says they have collective ownership. So, uh, communism. Nah, no, it ain't like that. It is that, literally. This is a commune. We're communists. Ah. Now, people who defend this say this is a joke, despite the fact that she says literally. It is that, literally. This is a commune. We're communists. So let's say it is one. Neil Cookman has called people racist, sexist, and homophobic. All the buzzwords because people didn't like his shitty game. So why exactly is it fine for him to make a joke that they are all communists, when communists have gone on to kill, rape, and murder up to hundreds of millions of people? It's funny how this is acceptable, but making fun of his shitty sequel is somehow not okay. It's almost like he's an elitist prick like everyone else in Hollywood, who play by different rules than the rest of us. Joel tries to get Tommy to take Ellie to the Fireflies for him, but he says he cannot because his wife won't let him. Joel then has another panic attack before we cut to Ellie, and we can see that Tommy's wife has given her a menstrual cup. That's sick! Why the fuck is this show so obsessed with her menstrual cycle? It's fucking disgusting. So Joel admits what we all know about him. No matter what was, I'm weak. He cries for a little bit and basically begs Tommy to take Ellie. Ellie overhears this and they have a confrontation, but by the next day, Joel decides to take Ellie to the Fireflies. They head to the university and when they get there, the Fireflies have moved on before Joel gets attacked and stabbed and that's the end of episode 6. 
episode 7, or better known as Did You Know Ellie Was a Lesbian? And that's basically it. It's a giant flashback when Ellie was in school and she goes on a date with Riley, another pointless side character who ends up getting bitten and dies. Oh, thank you. God. Riley also says in the episodes that people treat her differently, either because they're racist or homophobic. Oh my God, who the hell cares? Thankfully, she dies, and that's the end of the episode. Episode 8 is when the show starts to get better, as it follows directly from the game. We have David, a religious leader of a group of survivors, and is obviously evil. Ellie is hunting one day and bumps into David. She threatens him, but looks like she can barely hold the rifle she is carrying. She wants medicine for Joel in exchange for the deer she killed. They wait for Troy Baker to get back with the medicine when David reveals that Joel killed the members of his group. He lets Ellie leave with the medicine but ends up tracking her down and capturing her. Joel finally shows some fucking aggression and starts killing and torturing people to get information as to where they're holding her. We then cut to Ellie who is being held in a cell and David tries to groom her. He also reveals that he loves the cordyceps. Is it evil? No, it's fruitful, it multiplies, feeds and protects its children. That's fucking stupid. She breaks his finger so he decides to eat her. She tells them that she is infected which distracts them and allows her to kill Troy Baker. I approve this. She is then chased by David, they fight and Ellie kills him. Joel then finds Ellie and they leave, and that's the end of episode 8. All in all, this was the best episode, as the show hasn't distracted us with as many shit side characters. The pace flowed better, Ellie was less irritating, and Joel wasn't a sad useless old fuck. The finale begins with yet another flashback of Ellie's mother giving birth on a ranch. This ranch will definitely be in season 2. Now the show explains why Ellie is immune, which is taken straight from Blade, as she was born when her mother was bitten. We also have an embarrassing scene where she is literally giving birth and is still able to kill an infected. What the fuck is this retarded obsession with pregnant women fighting people whilst in labour? Marlene comes by and finds that she has been bitten. Marlene decides to take the kid and for some reason give her to the military that she is currently fighting. The Taliban wouldn't give their kids to the US Army, so why does she? We cut to the present and we can see Joel and Ellie trying to make their way through a city in order to find the fireflies. On the way they meet a giraffe and Joel confesses that he tried to kill himself before they are flashbanged by the fireflies. Joel wakes up and finds out that Ellie is being prepped for surgery. Marlene explains her immunity. It makes normal cordyceps think that she's cordyceps, it's why she's immune. You're talking bullshit. Then why the fuck does every infected person she comes across try to kill her? If they actually believed that Ellie was infected, then they would not attack her as they do not attack each other. This explanation is bullshit. So the Fireflies plan to kill Ellie and harvest her brain. Joel is escorted off the premise but ends up killing everybody on his way to rescue Ellie. I won't let you take her. Man, he is going to regret that when the doctor's steroid-taking buff daughter comes for him. He rescues Ellie and is confronted by Marlene in the car park. He ends up killing her and lies to Ellie about there being no cure. They head back to Tommy's wife's commune, where Ellie makes Joel swear that what he told her was the truth. Swear to me that everything you said about the fireflies is true. I swear. Okay. And that's the end of season one. Well, I wasn't very good. It started off fine with the first episode, then quickly turned into shit for most of the season, where they added mostly filler for the season before picking up for the last two episodes. And when you compare the scenes taken from the game to the show, they aren't as well acted, coming across more stiff by comparison. Let me go. You've just come after her. Let me go! You just come after her. Now, a lot of changes to this story are only here to help facilitate the events that are going to happen in the second season because they needed to compromise a better story in order to make a shitter one work. Now, for as much as I did not like this TV show, I simply cannot wait for season two as we get to see that piece of shit video game get adapted and we finally get to meet Senator Abby Armstrong because I'm going to be fucking laughing when she's on screen. So yeah, that was The Last of Us. It was a piece of shit.